Hello everyone, Steve here with the latest version of my uh, Coupe Purdue clock. Uh, this design is finally finished and ready to release on my mini factory. And this design has an integrated battery in the motor shell. And so there's no exposed wires. Right here is the battery compartment. And then the, the motor and additional weights is right here. And then this is the trigger for the, the rewind mechanism. As this weight shell falls far enough, this lever is going to flip over and that will trigger the motor to lift the weight. And then when it lifts far enough, that lever will fall back and shut off the motor. The motor that lifts the drive weight is this little tiny N20 motor. It's really quiet and it's low power and it also works along with uh, a tiny reed switch and a magnet. The secret is the lever that sits in the motor module. When the motor module tilts far enough, the lever will flip and there's a, a magnet on the lever and then a reed switch right next to it. When the lever flips, the magnet comes close to the reed switch, makes contact, and that turns on the motor. That will enable the motor until it flips back. Then, then the magnet drops away from the reed switch and everything shuts off. This is all of the wiring that's involved in building this clock. There's a battery compartment that runs power to the motor and to the reed switch and then a wire that goes from the motor to the reed switch. So really just a couple of solder connections and all of that tucks into this motor cavity. This clock has two different dials. It has a, a Roman numeral dial and Gothic style hands and also simple numbers with uh, spade hands and the frame has hanging hooks built in so the clock can be a desktop clock or a wall hanging clock. Uh, either one it works just fine no matter how you like to build it. Um, the design includes both. The clock also comes with a Coupe Purdue escapement or a traditional deadbeat escapement. The Coupe Purdue, if you notice the second hand, it ticks 60 times per minute. That's because this lever arm right here halts the, the motion of the escapement for one half of the cycle. Here, if I go slowly, you can see the escapement rotates in that direction but not in the reverse direction. So it, the escapement only rotates on one direction of the swing. The side effect of this is the escapement has 60 large ticks per minute, makes it a little bit noisier. The deadbeat escapement has 120 small ticks per minute. Each of those ticks is a little bit smaller, makes the clock quieter. I actually like the, the deadbeat escapement a little bit better. The side effect there is the second hand has 120 ticks per second. So not quite as natural of a movement, but it makes it a, a bit of a quieter clock. Here's a rewind going on in this clock right now. And then you can see the lever arm. You, you can see that the, the motor lifted. And then when it lifted far enough, everything shut off. Let's zoom into this clock for a second. It's just about to, to do a rewind. There's the trigger. The motor is lifting the, the module and then the lever flips back out of the way. Uh, one thing you also notice is this clock has a knob on the back and that can be used to change the time on the clock. Uh, right here is a little spring from a ballpoint pen that creates a friction clutch and that allows that allows 
this gear to rotate, but the gear that's being pushed by the motor uh, continues to drive the escapement. So the time can be set by allowing this gear to rotate and the clock still operates while you're changing the time. This knob, however, doesn't work if you have the clock mounted on the wall because it sticks out from the back. So this clock can be adjusted by just grabbing the closest gear to you, which is here in the upper left corner. It's the farthest forward of all of the outer ring of gears and just rotate that gear and then you can set the time. My other clocks would allow you to set the time by just pushing on the minute hand. Uh, that doesn't work when there's a second hand in the way. So this is an equally acceptable solution of setting the time on the clock. This clock's been running now for about a month on its set of batteries. This first version has been going for about six weeks so far. And these were already nearly dead batteries when I put them in. As far as I can tell, these batteries should last about six months before they need to be replaced. This design will be available on my mini factory very shortly. Uh, maybe by the time this video is out, it'll be posted there. And thanks for watching.